Hey guys, hope everything's going well. You guys know that drill. Smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and comment down below. Follow me on Instagram at AIH underscore sports. Follow me on my finance channel at AIH Finance. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the stock market bros and how I believe the stock market bros have impacted this industry. So I, in my previous videos earlier on, I used to compare the stock market a lot to the card market. And I thought it was a good comparison at first, but over time, my view started to change and I was reading more about the liquidity in not liquidity but just the volume of transactions in sports cards and i was looking at it from a different point of view after i did some of my research in my older not older but videos from earlier this year where i talked about articles in the chicago tribune and i realized hey you can't compare apple stock to this market I used to talk about Apple stock is just like Tom Brady. I'm like, nah, that's not the case. You, you can't do that. And the reason why I've stated over and over again is guess what? The volume in Apple stock has millions of transactions. The volume in Tom Brady cards, well, people do trade them or speculate in them, but it's not even close. That's why you cannot compare that. I used to also look at the PWCC indexes compared against the S&P 500, but once again, the volume of those sales is very low and those transactions don't happen very quickly, the high end of those cards. So I've learned that. And one of the constructive criticisms I've had for this industry is that you have, uh, for instance, Carl Ladder talks about market capitalization. You can't do that, in my opinion, for the card market. Once again, volume is an issue. And two, the other issue is, look, in this marketplace, as I mentioned in the previous video, you can only be, bu there's buyers and sellers, right? But you can't short sell this type of transaction right in the stock market you have people that speculate on the long side people that speculate on the short side that's what makes a market now there may be problems when in the stock market if there's people are shorting way much more than the total outstanding shares that's fraud right that's a different issue i'm talking about just an overall marketplace where, okay, you have buyers, sellers, et cetera, right? Bulls and bears. Now the industry, the other constructive criticism I have for them is they're only telling you to be positive, right? The negative people should be thrown out. And a lot of them missed the downward move from February and March of last year to right about now. Now, there may be a few exceptions of some cards that have gone up. I've mentioned them before. Joe Jackson card, Chulis Joe Jackson rookie. There are, you know, the Mantle sale. Okay, that, that's far in between. The vast majority of cards from that time frame have gone down. Now, some people will be like, hey, you're looking at it from a short-term perspective. You're not looking at it from 2018 or even before. Yeah, sure. Cards have gone up from that time frame. No doubt about it. But the vast majority of people that got into the hobby were during the pandemic. And a lot of them are bag holders now, right? Granted, if you still bought cards earlier on, 2018, and haven't sold, most likely if it's a card in high demand, those are doing even well to this day. Now, <clears throat> like I've stated, the industry only wants bulls. They don't want any bears because their argument, in my opinion, is uh, fragile. Because 
this is not the same thing as a liquid stock market. This is more like a penny stock market. And granted, there may be some cards that have what I would like to call intrinsic value, like a mantle a vintage card. Sure, Hank Aaron, Babe Ruth card, scarce card. Okay, sure, intrinsic value, right? But vast majority probably aren't, okay? So that's one thing. And the other thing is, I was told, you know, by numerous or multiple people that uh, Carlos, because I'm Carlos, has been making um, all these uh, smart aleck comments about me and my channel. And, you know, you are free to say whatever you want about me, regardless of what influencer you are, big or small. But what I can find quite interesting is he made a video, I think earlier this year, and I'm going to tie it back into, you know, this whole issue of volume. And with F1, my thesis around F1 is that it's overhyped and this thing is going to be coming down, right? And a lot of the reasons why it was going up because of a Netflix documentary that got in more people in the hype cycle, you know, that Luber talks about, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I remember... <coughs> He was talking about how at the time, oh, this uh, one $360,000 card, I think that's what it was, the PSA 9 Hamilton card, sold for a ridiculous amount of money and was trying to insinuate that the market's strong. <coughs> Need some water. But anyways, my thought process at the time was that the market is fragile. You cannot continue to have record sale after record sale because you're going to run out of buyers. That's basic technical analysis. And then liquidity dried up in the high end of this market. It dried up because the Fed jacked up interest rates and bada bing, bada boom. Now the BGS 9 is at $30,000, right? So that market's fragile. Just like him, there are many people in the industry that look at these cards as if it's a high volume transact or if they're involved in high volume transactions like Apple stock. And that's not the case. <clears throat> this is what the industry missed talking about these scarce cards over and over again. They did not look at the valuation of these cards as well. They did not factor in monetary policy, which I have factor in. They didn't talk about discretionary income being reduced once the economy opened back up. So <clears throat> it's quite interesting how the industry gave, in my opinion, the wrong advice. And at the same time, they point fingers at people like me, who was pretty much interviewing people February and March of 2021, saying this is a bubble, it's going to be coming down, right? With Top Shot, I had the estimate that it'd go down within a few weeks of the top. So this goes on and on. There's going to be more attacks on me, which is fine, right? But at the end of the day, that's what the industry has to do, right? They point fingers at people who were more right than wrong. And they will continue to say the negative people are bad for the hobby, right? If you look at the SGC guy, he was saying there's a lot of negativity without getting into what was the negativity. And he was saying there's misinformation. I don't know what he was talking about. But it's ultimately people calling out the industry for the shill bidding, calling them out for the hanky-panky, calling them out for the trimming, right, which they're quiet about, calling them out for the cleaning and all that stuff. People get triggered when they hear cleaning, but ultimately that's not allowed in the coin business, right? So it is what it is, guys. So I just wanted to point that out. And anyways, guys, uh, I'll talk to you later, guys. All right, see ya. Bye.